everyone. Welcome to the Radiant Wellness Podcast with myself, Jamie, and Laura. Here we connect you with inspiring experts in the field of food, healing, mindfulness, emotional well being, and spiritual actualization. So we're very honored today to have a very special guest with us. Her name is Kristen Dornick, and she is an award winning recipe developer, blogger, and content creator in the health and wellness space. She shares healthy living, non-toxic, low toxic swaps and recipes that are compliant for paleo, gluten-free, grain-free, and many other that are toddler friendly on social media. We need that, we need that for (laughs) our kids. Um, Kristen's world turned upside down in 2009 when she learned that she had to eliminate wheat soy, sugar, dairy, and corn from her diet due to having PCOS, but she was able to heal her body with food in the process. We're going to need to learn what PCOS is because I don't (laughs) know what it is. Uh, She launched Kristen's Kitchen with a mission to share her years of research on healthy alternatives to everyday foods um, that the, um, with those, uh, with food allergies, intolerances, and special dietary restrictions um, that can no longer eat those other things. And she, as well as she will try and find out, find new products on the market so that she can share them with others. So that's what her podcast is about is healthy eating for people who have maybe compromised immune systems, chronic conditions, allergies, food intolerances, et cetera. So she attended Organic Week DC with the Organic Trade Association to Capitol Hill to lobby for the organic food industry in May, 2019. And she's a 2X ShiftCon award winner for Rising Star in 2018 and Best Healthy Recipe Blog in 2019. Congratulations, Kristen. (laughs) She's the author of two cookbooks, Eat Real Food and Together for Christmas. In the spring of 2023, she launched her Substack and was the first to break the story about appeal. Thank you for doing that. The appeal controversy, which has led to worldwide readership and outrage as people should be outraged. She lives in Southern California with her husband and son and is working on a guide to a toxin-free lifestyle. Welcome. Welcome, Kristen. We're so excited. Yeah, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to dive into all the things with you. Yeah. Oh you, my gosh, there's so much. Yes, you mentioned before the show that you have some secret exciting things to share with us. I you don't do. have to still now, but if you want to, you can. Or we. I, can, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to share that when we get to appeal, and it'll it'll work itself in. That's for sure. Um, but I'm so grateful to be here and, and I'm excited that you guys also care about appeal and our food in general. I mean, I'm big fans of boo and have been eating your bars for years. Um, and I love that it's organic and the ingredients are so clean. So, um, I just, I love that you guys are, are, are intentional about the ingredients you use and that you truly care about what we eat and what we put on our bodies. Thank you so, so much, Kristen. And thank you for being the great researcher that you are to do the deep dives for our audience on these issues and products that are so important to our health that the mainstream legacy media is not telling us about. And mm-hmm. the stores are not telling us about these things. Why is that? Like, it, does that make sense to anybody? Well, you know, I I think we all have uh, our own ideas of why the mainstream media is not picking any of this up. (laughs) But as far as grocery stores, to be honest, most of them aren't aware. Most of them aren't aware that, uh, let's say, for example, about appeal. I I remember when I was doing research about appeal, I called five or six different Whole Foods and none of them knew about appeal. And none of them had any answers until finally one of them said to um, call headquarters and when I called headquarters, they gave me some scripted answer. So even they necessarily weren't familiar with appeal. And I get Whole Foods is a big company. They have to have call centers, blah, blah, blah. But when you have someone representing your own grocery store, your own company, you should be familiar with these things. And I called a couple different times and got a scripted answer. So the reality is, is there's a huge lack of education on not just appeal, but 
the food industry and ingredients that we're consuming. I mean, people are still using canola oil. It's like America's oil. It's gross. It's so, yeah. so Kristen, can you, we've been talking about appeal a lot with on our um, Instagram lives and had you on and, you know, some of our uh, audience is already familiar with appeal. Can you give us a little bit of background? Cause you mentioned, you know, in the bio, we read that you broke the story on appeal. Can you talk a little bit about how you came to know what it is, what is appeal, just to give a little bit of background to our listeners. Yeah. So I was on uh, a Facebook group uh, that's all about, you know, non-toxic living and and clean ingredients. And somebody had posted in there, what, has anybody heard of appeal? And nobody had heard of this. This was back in pretty much like a week before I posted my sub stack in April. And I just dove in. I was like, well, I'm what is it? I'm going to look it up. Nobody else knows. And I just went down a deep rabbit hole of what it is. So for people who aren't aware, it's a plant-based coating that's being used on produce to keep it fresher for longer. So in theory, what their uh, mission is, is to um, prevent food waste, which I think is awesome. That, that small part is great. Like there's so much food waste and it's unfortunate and it's sad when so many people go hungry. So, um, it is to one of their missions with that is to prevent food waste. Great. But what's on it? I'm not sure. Um, only because they're only telling us little bits and pieces and it's not clear cut. You have to do a deep dive and figure out what, what it is. So for those of you thinking, okay, cool. Well, I'm just going to only buy organic sorry, it's being used on organic produce too. And then for those of you saying, well, I'm just going to wash it off. That's the mic drop. When I tell people it's on organic too, they're like, I have to find a different place. I need to find a different supermarket. I can't go where I've been going. Right. And then you think, oh, well, I'll just wash it off. Sorry, you can't. It says on their FAQs on their website, you can't wash it off. So um, mystery plant-based substance and we don't know what it's made out of, Correct they don't disclose or do we know some of the ingredients we know <laughs> something <laughs> we know some of the ingredients but not because they're being upright and honest and saying right there on their website here's what it is because what they're saying is it's made of mono di- mono and diglycerides which is a common food additive um and typically it's used in small quantities um and with after doing so much research, they use, it's made of grapeseed oil. Well, hi, we spend a lot of money to buy organic and buy, read labels and to avoid seed oils. Now I have to worry about grapeseed oil in my produce. And I said this in our Instagram live, but your produce should not have an an ingredient list that like point that that's it period. Um, The other concern is, you know, produce loses or can lose 30% of its nutrition or nutrients, excuse me, um, with a f- within a few days after it's harvested. So ideally when you're buying an apple or a, a whatever a cucumber from the grocery store that's coated in a peel, you're not really sure how old it is because the coating does make it look like it's brand new. It looks like it was harvested a few days ago, but with this coating, we're, we're unsure of how old it is. Um, and That's, then also yeah. how nutritional, what the nutritional value is. Yeah. yeah. And what you said before about, you know, there's so much food waste in this country. I read that 50% of our produce actually gets thrown away, but the answer is not to coat it with right. something. It's right. To distribute the food to the people who need it. Right. And then there's some really great companies who are using what they call the ugly produce because the ugly produce is not what they want. The grocery stores want to show because who's going to buy a weird looking apple? Well, there are some great, uh, you know, companies who are using those ugly, you know, fruits and veggies and using them for, I think, to like freeze dry them or just do different um, processes to them to or use them in things, freeze dry or uh, dehydrate or whatever. Um, and you would never know that that apple had like an extra lump. I don't know, but, <laughs> um, yeah. it's, it's interesting. Cause I've been growing a lot of my own food lately and it does not look like supermarket produce. It's right. weird looking stuff. That's right. My garden. I know. Same, same it's like carrots with two heads. And I know. All sorts of stuff. 
Yeah. See, the 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 grocery stores don't want to sell that. They want a beautiful, perfectly shaped carrot that you would see in like a Winnie the Pooh book. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's concern about the ingredients because they're using seed oils. Mono and diglycerides um, is used a lot of the time to help with certain ingredients um, so that they don't separate. So I'm finding it a lot more in different like nut butter options. So it's always good to obviously read ingredients, but it's an emulsifier. Right. Um, and regardless of if it's in small quantities, I don't want to eat it. I don't, it's just something I, I would like, I personally would like to avoid. And we spend a lot of money to buy organic. Now I have to worry about uh, where, what produce company is using appeal. It's wild. It's wild. So and after doing some digging, I just started finding out all these different things. You know, they, they use organic peel is the, is the one that they use for, uh, the organic coating and they list, um, the ingredients on their, uh, it's like a fact sheet or it's a, an e it's a, it, they list their ingredients after doing some, a deep dive and it's actually registered as a pesticide excuse me. Um, and they list citric acid as 0.66% of the ingredient list. Well, right underneath it, it says other ingredients, 99.34%. I'm sorry. What are these other ingredients? I would like to know. And if, if you would like to tell me appeal, then tell me, but why is this a secret? Yeah. That, you know, you just gave me an idea, Kristen. I think I'm going to push back um, we have an organic consultant. We, you know, we're certified organic. I'm going to push back again, you know, and she's very influential. She's on the boards of a lot of the different organic companies. And we should be, I'm going to ask her why this is being allowed. You know, we spend so much money and so much effort to ensure that everything that we use is organic for our mm -hmm. products. Why are the standards being kind of bastardized right this this kind of travesty really to exactly yeah. exactly and our companies yeah. required to label the produce as used with appeal because i'm thinking okay i'll go into the store and i just won't buy the produce that has the appeal sticker or label on it right and in a perfect world that would be the way to go that would be the you know, that's what I would tell people is, Hey, just, if you see a sticker that says, you know, coated with appeal, avoid. Um, I believe that appeal would like every produce that has their coating to have a sticker on it. It's they're proud of their product. They, that's something they would want. Um, unfortunately that's not, uh, required if you will. So when I spoke with whole foods, they said that, if I would like to know what produce has appeal on it, I just need to talk to your produce manager because it's not necessarily going to be labeled on each avocado or apple or cucumber or, or what have you, but it should be labeled on the box. So now I have to talk to the produce manager to go look in the back and see which box has an appeal sticker on it. Um, and no offense to that person doing their job, but if they don't really care and they're in a hurry or just have whatever, they're just going to go to the back out. Yeah. It doesn't have it. Or yeah, it does. I mean, there's, I, it's not enough for me. Or mix it up. Right. Mix that produce with other produce. Of course, of course. And somebody just even a, a consumer at the store picking up an apple and then realizing they took too many, put it back in the wrong one. Boom. I, I mean, it's, it's very unfortunate The the honest way the the truth about avoiding appeal is doing something that everybody has the privilege or the room or anything to do. And that's grow, have your own garden. Well, not everybody is able to do that. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. Um, I did markets like if people live in colder climates, you know, the farmers right. are not year round there. Right. Right. There's so many, um, variables to that. Um, I don't have a big outdoor space. I have a, a little wall. I mean, we could call it a garden, <laughs> but it's not a little wall area where I have, I think 11, um, terracotta pots and I grow basil and lettuce and chives. That's, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm also, I don't have any green thumb or finger. So 
Um, uh, but I, it's working. I able to, I'm able to get some lettuce and chives and basil, but, um, that's not enough. If we are talking about how do we control exactly what's in our food? Um, so it, it's just unfortunate. And also the FDA labels the stuff as safe, but they also label artificial food coloring as safe. And I don't, I don't want that. And if there's evidence that those are carcinogenic, carcinogenic. Yes. So I, for people who say, well, it's deemed safe, you I, know I don't that, buy it. You know, that Skittles are not allowed in Europe. It's like, we allow all these foods here. If you want to, yeah. you know, call them foods or kind of Franken foods are not really food. We are the most lax when it comes to allowing foods in our country. Right. Yeah. That's why the Europeans are healthier than we are. I agree. I agree. If you look yeah. at side by side, you know, Reese's or any of those candies or even some cereals too, or I think oatmeal is another one. Another one is oat, oat milk. You look at the ingredients here in the U S and you look at the ingredients in Europe and it's ours is twice as long Yeah, for the same product for, by the same brand. And it just goes back to the corporate capture of our regulatory agencies. These are the agencies that we pay for through our tax dollars to protect us but their allegiance is not to us, clearly, uh -uh. to the corporations. Um, and there's a revolving door. You know, they work for the agency for a while, and then they get a cushy job with the corporation and get paid big salary. So right. They're not going to bite that hand that's feeding. Right. Do we know if appeal is allowed in other countries, or is it only in the U.S., or, or how are we seeing it We're on a global scale? It is in other countries. Um, I believe uh, the UK, Germany, um, and there's a few others. On their website, they do list uh, where you can find their produce with appeal. Um, and it's not just here. at Canada as well. Um, and obviously all over our country. And the hard part is obviously in different regions, it's going to be have uh, different stores that carry what. Um, one big store here in the US Costco mm -hmm. they actually signed a deal with them in 2018 about with appeal and uh I emailed the produce uh I believe it's the the VP of produce or the head produce person I'm not I'm not sure of the title um at Costco and I got an email back saying that they are not using appeal at Costco and one of the reasons is is because Costco has a has a very fast turnover you go in in the morning there's 3000 bananas at by six o'clock. There's none left. Mm -hmm. There's one left. They don't need to use a peel on their produce because it sells really fast. And on top of that, a peel costs money. It's not a free, you know, a free solution or coating or product to these produce companies. So they do, um, or I, sh I should say Costco doesn't, what they're saying is they don't need to use it. So Costco, it, while they, if you Google Costco and appeal, they did sign a deal a while back, but they are not using it. So one of the things I've, I was hoping that that was, uh, that was consumers pushing back and Costco responding to the negative response from consumers. And it very well could be a mixture of both. Um, that's for sure. Uh, maybe who knows, maybe they were planning on still using it and they've heard, you know, so many people complain about it. But one of the things I, I have been working on, amongst other things, obviously, is uh, reaching out to different produce companies and grocery stores and finding out who is using what and who's avoiding appeal, et cetera. And what, there's one, and I it's been a while since I updated this one specific post, but um, because I haven't heard back from some produce companies, and I've emailed a few times, but... I was trying to find a produce company that ships produce uh, because not everybody has access to the same grocery store. So some people don't have a mother's market or an air one or, you know, whatever, but people let's say in California have access to um, a specific produce delivery, you know, shipping service. So I've been trying to also find produce companies that ship their produce to see and I did find one and I I just don't want to quote it because I don't want to say the wrong name I'd have to look um but there are some, there are definitely grocery stores that are avoiding it and 
choosing to not use appeal. Um, but at the same time, things can change. And it's important that we always ask if we're unsure, always ask your produce managers because things change just like ingredients and products change. Um, people, you know, brands do reformulations all the time with their ingredients and you could think it doesn't have X, Y, and Z in it. And next thing you know, there's that ingredient you were avoiding right in that product or worse an allergen. Yeah. And luckily for us, um, ever since we talked to you, I know me and Laura have been asking at our local um, favorite grocery stores. And uh, we are very fortunate to be in San Diego where there are several grocery stores that are not using appeal. And one um, local chain that actually has on their social media, appeal does not appeal to us. So luckily- we're in an area where we do have those options and we know that the grocery stores um, are doing the work on our behalf. Um, but yeah, like you said, not everyone has that. And it really is going into your local store and talking to them and talking to someone else potentially, you know, to get the answers. Yeah. And being vocal, we, we can advocate for ourselves here and, but with our dollars, if we don't want to buy produce with appeal on it we need to let these grocery stores know and you know they they hear us I, I remember early on I believe it was in like May so pretty soon after I posted this article someone had told me that they called Sprouts and they said Sprouts was getting a lot of calls and that's awesome because some people will see uh that all they have to do is call their local grocery store and you know we get busy and then, and we have kids and running around and we have to make dinner and we have work and blah, blah, blah. But that one call does so much more than you think, because if, if a hundred people all say, man, so-and-so is going to call, I don't need to call, but there's a hundred people that are deciding not to call. That's a hundred calls that Sprouts is not getting or whatever grocery store. And they're not hearing that this is important. This means something. So please call. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, go into your supermarket. So we don't have the answer about Sprouts yet because that's the, the mystery for me. So this is hard. I emailed Sprouts and they said they are not using Appeal. But I have gotten comments from people and emails from people saying that they have seen Appeal in their stores. Really? So I, this is that's a hard one for me because on one hand, um, I believe if if I email if I email a, a a grocery store or company and they, they give me an answer. I need to believe that I can't, I can fight back if I have evidence, but for me personally, I have not seen it in stores. So I just, I'm, I'm not sure on sprouts because I've just, like so I said, seen, they've seen, they've seen boxes that have the appeal logo. Yes. On. I personally haven't, but some people say they have. So, wow. Yeah. But they emailed me and said, they're not using it. So I don't really know about when, that one. Do you follow up with them and say, hey, people, you know, saw in, in this store, in this location? A box. I, e I did. I emailed again and I, I didn't hear, just like I didn't hear back from Trader Joe's. I called a few times and I called a few different stores around the country. Um, you know, at some point, obviously I, I, I can email again, but, and, and call, I've called people in stores don't really have answers. They always have to go to a higher up someone I don't have access to. And so for the, the stores that I'm not getting answers from, I'm just calling it a not yet. I'm not going to shop there right now. That's, that's where I am with it. I've only shopped at Jimbo's and, and lazy acres and OB people's in San Diego. Mm -hmm. since since you told me about this, you know, another so thing is farmer's markets are great, but I would still ask, I would still ask. It, it's just something that we need to advocate for ourselves and don't assume, don't assume that because it's organic, it's fine. Don't assume because it's at a farmer's market, it's fine. Just still ask. So I want to get clarity about this because I was told that they don't even have to label it on the box. Are you saying they do have to label it on the box? I don't have a clear answer, but this is, that's okay because I have some news and this will lead okay. into uh, what happened over the weekend. So um, make sure you, uh, remember that question. So, um, over the weekend, I attended the global produce and floral show in Anaheim. It's, uh, basically, I wish I remembered how many people, 20 to 25,000 people. Maybe I was waiting on 
a final number of that. And there is every inch of that main uh, convention center is filled with produce and flowers and uh, distributors and brokers and packaging and everything under the sun related to produce. So um, it's it actually in one section where it's all flowers. It's so nice to walk through because it smells so good. <laughs> but um, I saw that appeal was there at this produce show. Oh, they didn't okay. know what they were getting themselves into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be an interesting wow. conversation. I know. So I actually had just, I was thinking like, do I go up to them? Do I not go up to them? I put a poll on my Instagram. Up to them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I put up a poll on my Instagram stories and I said, do you think I went up to them? And the answers were heck no. And like, of course you did. And it's so funny because the answers are split down the middle. It was like 50, 50 or 51, 49. And whether I did whatever I did. So on the last day I thought, all right, let's, let's go up. <laughs> and I saw the co-founder um, who I have mentioned before, her name's Jenny and another gal who's there, I believe marketing gal. And I, they were talking to someone and I thought, well, I'm going to grab a, a little button, a little pin on their coffee table. I really wanted a pen. I don't know why. <laughs> um, and I'll just wait, step aside and wait until they're done talking. Cause I didn't want to interrupt. And as I was like grabbing the pin, little circle pin and like stepping back, I hear a, Hey, Kristen, <laughs> of course they know who I am. Uh, they've seen the article. Right. Yeah. Um, and Wow. Yeah. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I went up to their booth. My intention was never to, I never wanted to go up to their booth and then just be like a butthole to them. Like I didn't want to like attack them or, you know, I'm not the kind of person who's going to come like with a secret video camera and <laughs> film them and post it online, whatever. And people would be shocked to know because people were shocked that I actually talked to them that they were so nice. I mean, they're just, nice people and they they obviously knew who I was and they actually invited me and my family to their headquarters to sit down and have a conversation with them or they wow. said they would come here and talk that's huge why would I not talk to them why would I not have a conversation with them so they said I can you know I told them our concerns I said look like I I, I appreciate your mission to end food waste um but at the same time like you have to understand that many of us, many of us are concerned with what is what you're using to do this. Um, you know, we spend a lot of, I told them, I was like, we, there's so many people spend a lot of money to avoid the stuff on our food. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's heartbreaking when we now have to worry about our apple having an ingredient list that we can't even find online. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I took, I took them up on their offer. We are going to sit down and talk. I'm not sure when, probably maybe after the holidays. Um, but this is where you come in. This is where anybody listening comes in. This is where people reading my Substack comes in. If you go to my Substack, Kristen's kitchen.substack.com. Um, and my name is K R Y S T E N. If you can't find it, but I've become the resident appeal girl on Substack. So you'll find it. Look for a post that says, thank you for that. Thank you for adv advocating <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> it, oh, it's a funny story how that happened. But if you go look for uh, my latest post, which I believe is called, I had the chance to meet appeal. Did I do it? Leave a comment with questions that you have for them. What do you want to know from appeal? Because I have the opportunity to ask the questions that we all want to know. The questions that we're looking for on Google and can't find. The questions that we should be able to find on their website and can't find. So yeah. please comment with questions. What do you want to know? Because uh, collectively, I can come with a list and sit down and get the answers from them. Now, two things can be true at the same time. They can, I believe that they uh, truly believe in what they're doing. And that's their, that's what they're doing with appeal. They, they're saving produce one apple at a time, whatever, yeah. but also, and, and I can learn from them and I can get gather information from them, but I don't have to want to consume it. So for me personally, regardless of what they say, I still don't want to eat it. I don't, I don't want that on my produce. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's so great what they're doing, why not be transparent about it if they're so proud of it? See, you're being logical here. <laughs> Sorry. That's a, no, I, I mean, that's what that's the logical. That's what we want to know. And there's no answer for that because they can't give us an answer. And I'm hope I'm hoping that I can get some answers from them. The reality is, is it, it shouldn't take this. Not everybody has the opportunity to sit down and talk with the co-founder of Appeal. So yeah. uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity that I have to do that. But we, it's not everybody has that opportunity. So if if I didn't go up there, and I'm not I'm not tooting my own horn by any means with this, but that this conversation wouldn't happen with them. How else are we going to get this information? Because from what I got from my conversation with them, and we did take us, we did take a picture because I was like, pick or this didn't happen, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I posted that picture. It's that's such a cute picture. Um, if uh, rat, my mom brain, I lost it. But going back to their ingredients and all that stuff, if if they're they seem to feel that what is being said about them is untrue. That's kind of what I gathered. Uh, but yeah. But if, if there's, if you would like to correct the truth, if you'd like to display the truth for people to see, why aren't you posting it? Why aren't you sharing answers to all of our questions on your website? When somebody asks you, is it made of chemicals? We don't want to hear an answer that just says, oh, everything's a chemical. The water is a chemical. That's not what (laughs) we're asking. And you know it. So I'm excited to talk to them and, and they were very nice. I told them I didn't bite and they said they didn't either. So (laughs) we're going to (laughs) talk. When is that going to be Kristen? I'm going to try to do it before the end of the year. It's hard with um, holidays and stuff, but it may end up being after the end of the year, but, uh, or after the new year. But I think the, you know, hopefully that gives people time to really leave some questions. I've gotten three or four questions. I posted this last night uh, commented. And then a bunch that that people have emailed to me that they want to keep you know, anonymous. Yeah. So, um, and I won't be sharing people's, you know, names with them, but, uh, yeah, if you have questions, please let me know because I will ask them. Thank yeah. you so much for doing this advocacy work on everyone's behalf. Yeah. Like- it's, it's funny. I didn't, like I said, I didn't sign up to be the resident appeal girl. I I'm a recipe developer. I create recipes. I'm a silly mom on Instagram and I, you know, I working on another book project and, I saw this, excuse me, I saw this appeal thing and I just dove in and wanted to share my thoughts on it and what I was finding and research. And all of a sudden, uh, my substack has turned into all about appeal and I'm, and I'm, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to share with what I'm finding. Um, but I, it's just funny how that just fell into my, fell into my lap. I don't know if you guys remember, you know, I guess it was in the nineties when, the whole non-GMO and and GMO, you know, they wanted to add GMOs to our our produce and not let us know. So this, for me, reminds me of that. Mm -hmm. But the way to protect ourselves was to buy organic. We knew if we were buying organic, it was non-GMO. With this situation, we don't have a way to protect ourselves. No, no. And that's hard. It's kind of like, again, why, why were there, you know, there was such pushback about labeling GMO foods as GMO. Mm-hmm. So this is, you know, I have to say, this reminds me of the same thing. If it's so great, just let people know. That's so, a good point. We we have a right to know what's in our food. We have, a, we have a right to know, um, I attended the keynote speech, uh, at this, uh, it's the IFPA, the, uh, global produce and floral show. Uh, I attended last week to the, the first day, which was all education and Kathy Burns, uh, gave this incredible state of the industry talking about produce and, you know, the, where we're at, uh, right now with the consumption of produce and, some of the things, you know, with inflation, it's it's just getting harder and harder for people to even afford fresh produce. Um, but she did say something that I loved and I wrote it down and she said that consumers want to know what they're eating and we 
as an industry need to embrace that. So she was speaking, this is only uh, produce. This, these are not consumers in this room. These are produce CEOs and companies and um, brokers and distributors and grocery store chains and all of that. And she's telling that industry that it, we need to embrace the fact that consumers want to know what we're eating. That's important. There's more and more people reading labels. I was somewhere over the weekend. Maybe it was at the show. I I, I think it maybe was at the show. And I asked to see the ingredients at a booth. And this lady came, was next to me and she said, oh yeah, you must be young because you are reading ingredients. Kind of like it's it's a newer thing coming up. And she didn't mean it as a, a negative, but it was like, a, you know, it's good that people are reading ingredients, but she could tell right away that I was young because I was looking at the ingredients. Um and the reality is, is yes, people are reading ingredients more, which is great. Um, I can tell sometimes that brands necessarily find it sort of offensive. They think if you just have it on the front that it says clean or healthy or organic, that it's going to, it's going to be like all of those things. But I think as with this, if it's organic, it can still have a peel on it. If it's organic, it can still have organic canola oil in it we have the right to know what's in our food. Tell us about canola oil, because a lot of people do think canola oil is healthy because it was marketed as a healthy oil. Right. Well, canola oil is uh, America's oil. Um, it's what most restaurants are using um, for all of their frying needs and everything under the sun to cook. Side note, if you didn't know this, if you're at a restaurant and you're ordering um, a salad, let's say, chances are obviously the dressing is going to have canola oil. It's cheap to use. But if you're ordering olive oil, there's a really good chance that it's cut with canola oil. Um, and that blew my mind. I learned that, I don't know, a couple years ago because I always just order olive oil for my salad with lemon. And I had just randomly thought to ask, you know, is it just, is it pure olive oil? And, the, and my girlfriend said, I used to work at this restaurant. No, it, it's cut with canola. And I was like, what? No, it's, it's olive oil. Sure enough, they checked and, um, it is, it was cut with canola oil at a major chain. Um, that's every restaurant uses it. Even the, even the finest restaurants, the finest five-star restaurants use this stuff. Um, what it is can, the problem with canola oil? Like what is it made from and it's, is it harmful yeah. to consume? Yeah. So it's super processed. It's super processed and can cause a lot of inf inflammation. Um, and it's, it's something that I think the way I view health, a lot of people would, who eat, let's say canola, they aren't, they don't know what it's like to avoid canola. They don't know what it's like to eliminate that from their diet. Cause that's one of the main things that they eat. So I don't think people realize they could even feel better with avoiding canola oil, if that makes sense, because they've never lived without it. It's something that, you know, our grandmothers used to in their Betty Crocker cake mix um, to use vegetable oil. But there's others like um, cottonseed oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, um, and they're kind of just showing up everywhere. There's a really great app called Seed Oil Scout. And uh, you can look on on their app, there's a map and it'll show you what restaurants are seed oil free. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's awesome because there's a big chain called Sweet Green and they just said that they're removing all seed oils by I think today or the end of this month. Um, so Seed Oil Scout is great for uh, learning about what restaurants are free of seed oils and some restaurants that maybe they still use seed oils, but maybe a certain amount of their menu doesn't have seed oil. So they'll say you can go here, but just only get these, you know, couple dishes kind of thing. So, um, I do everything I can to avoid seed oils, but also know that if I eat out, there's a chance I could still ingest it. But seed oil scout is a great, um, tool to carry with you because you have it on your phone in your pocket. Yeah. The, the other thing is when I was driving through Montana, I saw fields of canola it's kind of this bright yellow crop mm -hmm. and it's heavily um sprayed mm -hmm. 
the canola, canola plants. And so even if it's organic canola oil, chances are a lot of times the organic fields are next to the non-organic fields and mm -hmm. they receive the pesticides as well. As right. To avoid. Right. It's really in so many things from protein powders. I know some great organic protein powders that they use canola oil in them or um, obviously seed oils drinks, candies, chocolate, everything can, I mean, just so many things contain seed oils, but they are cheap and that's why they're, they're used over oils like avocado or olive oil. Um, they have higher smoke points too. So they're great for restaurants with frying and all that kind of stuff. So they're just really heavily processed and refined and they use different, like you said, like solvents and stuff like that um to get it to the uh state of which the you know the final result to get to the oil canola oil that you see in like the grocery stores i mean this is a lesson that i learned early on in the food business that if you're in the food business and you want to get into supermarkets you really have to make sure if you want to be profitable that you use cheaper ingredients. And that's something I refused to do from the start. And people mm -hmm. thought I was crazy and still mm -hmm. think I'm crazy, but it's like, if I don't want to eat it, I'm not going to make it. Right. I love that about you and your heart for this, for your, the food industry and, and ingredients and, and boo as well. There's, there's a really great vegan um, burger that I used to love, like a veggie patty. And they were all organic, just the cleanest oils or cleanest ingredients. And they used coconut oil. They decided to swab it for organic canola oil because, um, uh, oh. to making sure, well, it's cheaper, but they said it was because they wanted to remain allergen friendly because people are allergic to coconuts, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And when I pushed back a little bit on it, they just said, well, it's organic. And I thought that, sorry, that. It's not enough, <laughs> you know, There's organic um, clean sugar. That doesn't mean it's healthy. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Always read your ingredients. <laughs> the labels don't mean what they used to. They really don't, especially as we learn more and more about the ingredients in our, in our foods. You know what, what's crazy still, I, I, that it just doesn't compute for me that restaurants really haven't caught on that people really do care about organic. Mm -hmm. Like I avoid restaurants unless I know they're organic. Right. It's so rare to find a restaurant that uses organic ingredients. It's like, even if there's a restaurant that's like gluten-free or maybe vegan, or it's even more rare to find one that's organic. It's hard. It's hard for me. Um, we don't eat out much, um, except for like, let's say traveling or companies in town. And for me, one thing I do, because I do care about organic is if I am eating out, I also avoid the dirty dozen. Um, and you know, so that means, you know, I love strawberries and if everybody's ordering dessert, I'm not going to order dessert because of different dietary restrictions with what I have. So my first thought is, oh, I'll eat some berries. Nope. They're not organic. I'm not going to eat them. I'll sit here with my, you know, bottle of water, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. So the dirty dozen. So that would be, let me see if I can get some of them and you tell me if I'm wrong. So I would imagine soy is something to avoid mm -hmm. in a, if it's not organic wheat. Well, it uh, changes yearly too. So oh. Yeah. So, um, f most of the time I would say, yes, I would avoid those anyway, <laughs> but, um, it does change, um, yearly, um, EWG puts out the dirty dozen and clean 15. And sometimes if I really need a specific ingredient then, and they don't have organic, I might get, um, I might get that. So for instance, like right now there's a blueberry shortage, I'm not sure if you're aware of this and I'm craving blueberries, but, um, it's really hard to find. It's actually impossible to find organic blueberries right now. Um, at least where I live, but they are on the dirty dozen. So I'm just not going to eat them. That's my, you know, I have two cho choices. I can eat them and buy conventional or I can avoid them. So 
right now, um, the, you know, the dirty dozen, I just pulled it up are strawberries, spinach, kale, uh, peaches, pears, nectarines, apples, grapes, bell and hot peppers, cherries, blueberries, and green beans. So these are all, um, the produce that you should avoid, um, unless organic. Um, and they also have their clean 15, which is like, if you're gonna, if you, if you're gonna buy conventional or want to save money and buy conventional, these are kind of like the ones that are okay. They have less, um, so those are avocado, sweet corn, pineapple, onions, papaya, sweet peas, frozen, asparagus, honeydew melon, kiwi, cabbage, mushrooms, mangoes, sweet potatoes, watermelon, and carrots. Okay. And that'll change every year. Yeah. So we'll yeah. link this to our show notes, what you just mentioned, along with the seed oil scout app and your sub stack. Just everything we're talking, I just want to make sure everyone knows yeah. that what we're talking about is going to be linked in the show notes. So um, folks don't if- have to. Oh, grab a pen and pencil. And <laughs> yeah, if you them. didn't write all those vegetables <laughs> and pro- all that produce down, it'll be in the show notes. I love it. Um, I just, I, I'm, I do see a change in kind of people's viewpoints. You're right, restaurants do are not catching on to this, but I do see a change in people's desire to want to avoid these things. Um, sometimes it takes a bunch of exposures. They somebody has to hear it five or six, seven, eight times, 10 times, whatever that may be before they go, huh? You know, and of course it always works where, you know, you tell your mom or your brother or your spouse or whatever, and they don't, they're like, yeah, you're crazy. Then they hear it from a friend or a coworker and they're like, Hey honey, did you hear that? Blah, blah, blah. You're like, what have I been telling you for how, how long? Um, but just keep educating people with kindness. People don't want to be, um, scolded or yelled at or, you know, I told you so they don't want to hear that. Just live with intention with yourself and let them see how you're, you know, eating or the things you're not eating. And if they ask why tell them, but, um, over time people are opening their eyes to this, uh, 100% opening their eyes to this. Um, so just stick with that because, um, not only obviously you're taking care of your own health, but people will see how you're living with intention. People tell me all the time on social media that I'm too strict, uh, with what I eat and I correct them. I am not strict. I'm intentional. I am not strict with what I eat. I'm intentional with the foods that I put into my body. And now that I give my son, um, so change your mindset on that for anybody listening who, you know, thinks that they're strict. Also, you know, who has the right to judge you for what you choose to put in your body? Right. You know, right. we're not judging other people who choose to eat, you know, M&Ms or whatever they yeah. put in their bodies. Right. But, so it's almost like it's a projection there and we make them feel uncomfortable. Of because, course. Yeah. You know, the fact that they're not being discriminating in what they're eating. Of so course. No problem. And people didn't, you know, wink, you know, blink at me. I mean, people did not care when I drank diet soda and had, you know, fast food or, you know, ate whatever frozen pizza. I don't even know what I used to eat, but nobody cared back then. When I started eating this way, I kid you not, people were concerned for my mental health. They were literally concerned for me that I was asking is there aspartame in that is there canola oil in that is it is there soy in that like I changed my whole diet back in 20 2009 um when I was diagnosed with PCOS and people were concerned for me I don't know what that is oh let's see you cut out what is you define PCOS oh yes yes so polycystic ovarian syndrome it's um it's often just labeled as um, oh my goodness, I'm losing it. autoimmune. Um, but it's pretty serious when it comes to your menstrual cycle. Um, in 2007, 2006, I had my period for three or four weeks. I lost 30% of the blood in my body and I was rushed to the emergency because I was the color of this wall. Um, and I had cysts on my left ovary 
Um, I had to have a blood transfusion. I, uh, a couple months later I had surgery. Never once did this OB, by the way, mention PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, and it wasn't until later on that I was with, with a naturopath and I was telling her all my symptoms. We did lab work, of course, and I was diagnosed with PCOS. Now it affects one in 10 women, um, maybe one in nine, one, in ten, one in nine to 11, I should say. Um, most women don't know they have it. It often goes undiagnosed. They're given different meds. I was given birth control and I didn't need birth control. I was not sexually active. I waited till my wedding night. I did not need this medication, but I was giving, I was given it to put a bandaid on my, on my heavy periods. Um, it can cause infertility. So you can also imagine all the other things that we deal with that mess with our hormones, hormones like toxins and endocrine disruptors and fragrance and all the ingredients that are harming our health. Um, so add that on top of this. Um, and, uh, it can be very serious. There's, there's different, uh, things that it can cause like extra, like acne, it can cause weight gain. It can cause, um, obviously irregular periods, insulin resistance, other things like anxiety, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I don't mean that as a negative on anxiety, just a lot of things. Um, and then obviously cysts on ovaries. Um, so I did have surgery still never once mentioned by that OB when I went to the naturopath doctor and we did all this and I avoided all these different foods, I lost 60 pounds in three months. Maybe it was two months. Um, I didn't do any crazy workouts. There was no CrossFit. I wasn't anything like that. I just simply avoided foods that were harming my health. When I went back to, back to this doctor and told her, Hey, look, I, you know, I feel better. My period is regular because I was eat I'm eating this way, blah, blah, blah. She laughed at me and she said, you can eat all those things. I'll just give you a pill for it. Oh my gosh. I don't want a pill for that. <laughs> Fixed everything with food. I, it was truly a let food be your medicine and medicine be your food uh, moment for me. So uh, I felt alone because no, I didn't know anybody else going through this. So that's when I started Kristen's kitchen a couple years after that, because I, I honestly felt alone, but I figured there were more people like this. Um, and it's just turned into like a really awesome community of other people with PCOS, but also just with dietary restrictions who eat similar to me, mainly paleo. Um, and now, you know, writing about the food industry and uh, ingredients and the importance of removing chemicals and toxins. So PCOS was really like a eye opener for me into this path with what I do. You know, interviewing other people who are involved in the food world, it, it seems like that's a common um, motivator for people. They've had some sort of a health crisis. And they kind of dug them, dug their way out of it, usually through getting healthier with what they eat mm -hmm. and their bodies, whatever, whatever it is. And they want to, you know, from their hearts, share with people how they can avoid, you know, what, what, what you went through, what, what I went through with being addicted to sugar and food. Mm -hmm. so, so I see that too. And those are the companies that I believe not just do well, but I, that I feel like when you, when you meet them in person, which I'm so grateful that I'm able to meet so many founders and companies through like Expo West and different food shows, um, and connecting with you guys, you can just tell the companies where the founders and the owners and the people who started this company, you can see a different sparkle in their eye. You can just tell that like, this is their baby and this helped them and they want it to help other people too. And they want to share that with people. And those to me are the, the, the best companies. Those are the companies that, like I said, they do well, but they do well because they're putting out, um, so much love and heart. they're sharing their heart, um, through food. And in turn, they're able to grow obviously the company, but grow this, a community of people who deal with the same things and find relief in, you know, maybe finding a protein bar that they can have that's not filled with sugar. Or like, I think a Siete 
they, you know, people can get back to their roots through, you know, maybe they couldn't eat corn anymore, but now they can still have tortillas with their family. Uh, one big thing that happens when you have dietary needs and restrictions and allergies is you kind of lose your sense of um, roots. You know, I'm Greek. So for a while, I couldn't eat a lot of like the, the foods that my family would eat during the holidays, all the Greek foods. But now through recipe development and, and finding new brands, I can still eat those things. So sometimes you lose your sense of like, home and where you're from this way. And it can feel lonely, but thankfully brands are popping up all the time saying, no, 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 we got this. You can have your, you know, tortillas, or you can have your spanakopita too. And, and we're going to just do it in a way that you can eat it safely. So, um, it's very much a, a heart thing that you can see with, with founders and companies. Cause you're right. It starts with one, one thing that happens in their life, one pivotal moment, something that changes their life forever for good. Yeah. Oh, sure that people don't have to go through the same suffering. You know, here's, here's the hack that I figured out, you know, you can have the party in the mouth, but without the negative health consequences. Totally. I love that. Yeah. And you have two recipe books, right? Kristen, where you have, um, I believe one is a holiday Yes. Book, right. Where you give people the opportunity, like recipes, alternative recipes to holiday favorites. Is that correct? Yes. I actually, I have them here, which I didn't plan to put them there, but they were, there they are. Um, I did together for Christmas is kind of like, which is what it looks like, which is filled with family recipes, um, that I've recreated to make, uh, healthy for me. Um, and so many other people that are need to be gluten-free or dairy-free and they want that pumpkin pie, but they don't know where to start or they want that pecan pie or they want that stuffing because the reality is, is there are ways to do it. Some people just don't know where to start. Um, there's also a lot of family pictures in here from when I was a kid and love Santa so much. And I've pictures of Santa because it feels like a love letter. It feels like a family heirloom that I'm, you know, passing down to my own kids, but also sharing with everybody. Um, food is so important. It really brings us together during the holidays. And when you have PCOS or have to avoid foods or whatever, um, it, 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 you can feel left out. So um, that's together for Christmas. And the other is eat real food. And they're both- Put that up again. I just, oh, that really this is that. eat real food. Okay. I'll send you guys a copy. It's just gluten-free. And there's a lot of vegan recipes in here paleo dairy free um i wanted to um uh a lot of stuff is recreation from stuff that i used to make or family stuff but also uh ones that uh i've recreated you know along the way um so i can I i'd love to share a code with you guys um how about we do if you do kristen 20 um i can send that um and that'll be in the show notes kristen 20 and um i can ship those out We'll do a post about it. So that oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Can, can you show that the holiday book again? Sure. This one is so exciting to me because like what you were saying, like eating and eating is such a part of the family experience, at least it was for me. And I know it is for a lot of people. And like you said, when you start having dietary restrictions, it gets harder. I've experienced that um, within my own family. And luckily I, my family's really great about like, Oh, let's try to make this. Dairy Look at how beautiful that is. Wow. That's amazing. What is that? Oh, oh this is a, that? this is a vanilla olive oil cake. Oh, wow. So yeah, there's a beautiful cake drizzled with chocolate filled with berries. Oh, that look at those beautiful pictures. Cause I think the holidays are such a difficult time for people because they don't want to feel like they're you know, difficult. And, but. and sometimes people just stay home. We don't want that. We need to be together for the holidays, together for Christmas. Yeah. Um, and nobody should sit home because they they can't eat um the food because the, you have the opportunity to. There's even a gingerbread house in here with like the stencils so you can oh. cut them out. Oh um, because wow. I want everybody to be included. And as you were saying, um, Jamie, about making it dairy free, th that's where I started. People are making mashed potatoes and I'm like, can we use dairy free? Like, do you have to load it with butter first and 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 milk? Can we like scoop some out <laughs> first? Um, and so there's just ways that everybody can eat together in here. 
The other cool thing is um, there's a pumpkin dessert recipe in here that my grandma used to make all the time and others too. And um, when she was kind of getting too old to kind of do all this stuff, I started recreating them and she tried them all and she loved them. She couldn't even tell the difference from her Betty Crocker versions to with what I was doing. So it kind of felt like a seal of approval from, from grandma, these recipes that she's made for, you know, a hundred years, not, not that long, but, um, and now I get to continue on because food is so important and it's nostalgic and it it takes us it transports us to a time and a place from our childhood with one bite and so the idea that we can still eat the things that we love and miss in our childhood favorites um but now but also eat them uh that fit our special dietary needs even if you're just like you don't need to avoid things but you want to avoid things um it's just it's so important to me to carry on food memories and food traditions, um, not just for myself, but now for my son, um, who he never got to meet my grandparents and, but he gets to have, you know, grandma's, you know, pumpkin dessert <laughs> kind of thing. So, um, it, it's just, it, it feels like a hug from, from our loved ones for sure, especially when they're not here anymore. That's so beautiful. What, what a great gift to people, Kristen. Thank you for creating that. Yeah. Thank you. And it's perfect timing given that the holiday holidays are right around the corner. So it's it's really your timing is 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 awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to start all the holiday cooking already. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that you'll come back, you know, after you've had your meeting with the peel. Yes. More about that. How I that would love that. Yeah. I would love that. I'll keep you guys posted. And like I said, anybody listening and you both as well, if you have questions, go leave them on that blog post or email them to me. If you want to stay anonymous from, um, you know, the blog post, um, I, I will take these questions and I will, I will ask them. I will ask all of these questions with what our community wants to know. And we have a voice and I have an opportunity, I have an opportunity to use uh, our voice together, because this is not for me. And this is not for, you know, this isn't just for me. This is for all of us. These are our, our concerns, yours and mine together. So, um, I'm really looking forward to sitting and talking with them. I'm going to email them today or tomorrow, just to follow up after the show and, um, you know, set a date, set a date with appeal. That's it's wild. Awesome. That's awesome. You've really inspired me. I have to say, Kristen, I'm going to, you know, send an email to our organic consultant and let her know that we're not happy that appeal is being used on organic products. Um, and we don't understand why USDA would allow such a thing. Uh, and I would also encourage people just to, you know, kind of take a stand when you go into a store a lot of the stores have comment cards you can fill out and just fill it out and say, we don't want to have appeal on our produce. We're mm -hmm. not buying produce here until you let us know that you're not using it. Right. It starts with like each and every one of us linking arms together. You don't have to have a platform or a social media or a podcast or a, a Instagram or a TikTok. You just need to use your voice, use what you have. And that is um, taking advantage of those cute, those cards, like you said, and telling your friends, like word of mouth is so powerful. That's how we find out about this stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. um, collectively together, we can link arms and, and go at this. I love that. I love that. Oh. How can folks connect with you? Um, you have a website, kristenskitchen.com. Yes. Uh, so kristenskitchen.com is my website. I, uh, am, revamping it, which is why there hasn't been anything new posted because I've been focusing so much on the Substack. But you, both of them, kristenskitchen.com, kristenskitchen.substack.com. Um, and I have uh, a lot of free content on Substack as well as paid content as well. Um, subscription based, but I do share both. Um, on my Instagram at Kristen's Kitchen, there's recipes, uh, recipes for your toddlers with baby led weaning, um, local restaurant finds and different silly videos that I <laughs> post related to food, um, and on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and all the things. So, okay. Um, we'll link all those, all the, all the social media. Awesome. And the book is available on my website, kristenskitchen.com. And if you're local in Newport beach, you can buy it in store 
at the snooty peach in Balboa Island. Oh, nice. Yeah. Family goes there all the time. I'll let them know. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for having me and for having this conversation. It's, it's, it warms my heart that people care about this. And like I said before, I'm big fans of Boo and what you guys are doing and congrats on this podcast. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for agreeing to come on and thank you for your devotion to people's health and transparency. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure. We'll see you next time. Sounds good. I'll be back with an update, hopefully. <laughs> All right. So, so grateful to have you on. Thank, Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.